everyone and welcome to the Edgar and Kelly podcast. This is where myself and Emma chat about all things United. We've got some hot topics for you, an interview, Q&A, in defence, all those good bits. Emma, how are you doing in apparently sunny Manchester? Uh, it's actually not that sunny today. It's a bit uh, overcast, right. <laughs> but I'm all good. I'm all good. Good. Right. Let's kick off with this first um, hot topic. Obviously, the Premier League season did kick off last weekend. We were not involved. So let's pretend that it's starting um, this weekend when United play. Um, so, yeah, I thought we'd chat about a bit of a season preview. Now, you know, we got into three semi finals last season. Um, we got third, which I personally was like over the moon with. At one point, I didn't even think that we would get flipping top six, let alone third. Um, do we. Is our optimism valid, do you think, for this season? Um, yeah, of course it is. I mean, like, obviously, it depends on if we get any more sign ins. For me, I'm still hopeful that we will get a trophy. I think we need a trophy this season. Um, I think we will get third place again. We just need to close that gap. I think we'll get third place, but we just close that gap a little bit between um, Liverpool and City. Um, I, d- I don't know. Angelina, how, how do you feel about this season? Um, I am optimistic, but I'm always optimistic with a new season. And then they do me dirty and I'm nearly crying. <laughs> but no, I, I think we do have reason to be optimistic. I think if we would have made one or two more signings, um, I think we I would be feeling even more optimistic. Um I think the aim is always for top four, obviously. Um, and I've, I've, I've got faith that we can do that. I think, like you say, it's about closing the gap. Um, do I think that Liverpool and City are still, you know, maybe like a tier above everyone else? Yes, sadly. But I do feel like, you know, Chelsea, United, Arsenal, etc. We can definitely close that gap, like you say. And I think that's really, really important. Um I think for me, um, I really want us, as much as I know we have to focus on top four, like I say, we have to focus on silverware, I think. Um, Even if the wheels came off and we ended up in fifth, dare I say sixth, which I don't think will happen before everyone starts trolling me that I'm wishing bad on the team, I'm not. But if we could finish with a bit of silverware, am I saying we're going to win the Champions League? Stranger things have happened, but no, I'm not saying that. But, you know, something like the Carabao Cup or the FA Cup, I think it would be great. You know, we already got to a semi-final last season in both those competitions. Like, why can't we get to another semi-final and a final? I think getting into a final would be absolutely massive, which is why I am gutted about that severe result. But obviously, you know, you have to question how things would have been in different circumstances with the pandemic and everything. Um, But yeah, I feel like the foundations are set and I'm I'm definitely excited to see how um how some players perform this season. I mean, who who's the player you're most excited to see or you think is gonna be our like best player? Our best player for me obviously is Bruno. You know, the impact he has made since coming um to Manchester United has been amazing. I think he's just gonna carry on and with Pogba, you know, we've got Donny van der Beek now, you know, we've got all these options for him to shine even more. And I think he will just outdo us and just be our best player this season. Mm. I mean, speaking of of best players, and we'll get into uh, into it a little bit more, we're just going to cut now to, we've got a few fans, friends, family, etc., to give us their predictions. So we will present those to you guys now. Have a listen, have a watch, and let us know in the comments section what you think. So, who do I think is going to be top goal scorer for Manchester United this year? Well, it's going to be the same man that was top goal scorer in the last season. Anthony Martial has become our number nine and he's coming of age quite clearly. You look at his performances, not only for Manchester United last year, but also coming into the French side as well. He's clearly a player that has matured a lot. He's obviously found himself in that number nine role and he's going to get better and better next season with a full season service from Bruno Fernandes and Paul Pogba as well. More goals are coming Anthony Martial's way. Top goal scorer incoming again. 
Top scorer from Manchester United next season, I'm going to go with Anthony Martial. He was there this season. He doesn't take penalties, so he relies on a lot of goals uh, coming from open play. And I think he is our best finisher in the squad. So in terms of top scorer, it's got to be Anthony Martial. I'm going to go with Tony Martial again. I think Tony Martial has found his goal scoring form and really come into the role as a number nine for Manchester United. And hopefully he can crack on again this season. The top scorer, uh, I think it would be Tony Martial. I think Rashford did fantastic, but there was quite a few penalties in there. Um, and I think now Bruno probably takes those penalties. Bruno obviously did pretty well and also had those penalties. Uh, but I think the way this team's playing, I think you're probably going to see quite a lot of um, Tony Marshall in this side. And I think Tony Marshall's going to be the one that's putting the ball in the back of the net. Probably not so many penalties, um, but just consistently getting on the end of chances. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Rashford and Greenwood um, push him hard. But there you go. I would say that's the one. Who do I think will be the top scorer? I think it'll be Anthony Martial for both United and in the Premier League. I'm going for both. Uh, in terms of player of the season, I think it looks as though it may be a, Bruno, a Bruno's to lose again after the stunning start he's had at United. I think he's going to carry that on next season. He's in a better team, hopefully, uh, with Van der Beek in there and hopefully a couple more signers as well. Player of the year. Going off the last six months... You've got to look very hard to get to get someone outside of Bruno. And the fact that he scores so many goals, creates so many chances and provides so many assists, the sensible money's on Bruno. I think Marcus Rashford, if he'd have not got injured, was in scintillating form and with better players around him, he could become player of the year. Um, but also I think Paul Pogba, in his more relaxed role, I thought he looked fantastic as well. So it could be any of those three for me. Um, it, it could be a centre-half that comes in and has a phenomenal season and smashes it. Wambasaka probably wasn't far off, I don't think, for last year. Um, but I would say smart money has to be on Bruno. Best player I'm going to go for... It's got to be out... Of, I'm going to go with Greenwood, actually. I think Greenwood's going to be key to this season. He needs a good season. If, if Rashford and Marshall and Kerrin are goal, goal scorer in form... And Greenwood obviously chips in with 20-odd uh, goals again this season, then he will be a key part of this squad. I think our best player will be Bruno Fernandes because we've seen what he was like for half a season. I can't wait to see what he's like for a full season. For our best player, I'm going to go with Marcus Rashford. I love Marcus on and off the pitch, and I think he's going to be United's player of the year. One player I'm look, worried about or might need to improve or does give me a little bit of concern is at left-back. Is Luke Shaw up to the job? There's talk of us buying someone. There's talk of maybe Brandon Williams getting the nod. I think Luke Shaw's got a bit more to give. He's not been at his levels that he was pre-injury and I'd like to see him get back there. Now, player of the year is a more difficult one because I think there's so many players that stand out respectively. Now, if Anthony Martial was to get goal, uh, goal scorer, top goal scorer for the season um, and United to win a trophy or two, then you could very well see Anthony Martial becoming that player of the year. But I think there are so many players in the team that actually make us tick and are vital to doing that. And you look at Bruno Fernandes and his goals and assists contribution. You look at Paul Pogba and the way he can make us tick. If they can do that for a full season, then there's no reason why they can't sneak in and get player of the year. So if I wasn't going to go Anthony Martial, which my Martial FC peeps will be doing, then I'd definitely go Bruno or Pogba, toss of a coin, Bruno Fernandes for player of the year. Who will win the league? I'm going to go with... <sighs> An outside bet on Chelsea, they bought a lot of players, spent 200 million quid. I think they might be a dark horse. And plus, they win the league sort of every five years anyway, they tend to win the league. So maybe they could just surprise everyone and win the league. Hopefully, it'll be United, but I think it might be Chelsea. I think United will finish third. I think we set the, we set the precedent last season, and I think that is the minimum requirement. But I just think we need to shrink the gap between third and second. Prediction for the season, I think it's going to be a strong one if we get the players in. If we get the players we wanted, like, aka Jane Sancho, we could probably be in with a chance at the top four. Without them, I think we might struggle with everyone strengthening around us. Uh, in terms of United's finish, <sighs> upsettingly, I'm going to predict fourth because I think in terms of the squad we've got, we've got the fourth best squad in the league behind City, Liverpool and now Chelsea after the investment they've made. So unfortunately, uh, I think it will be fourth place for Manchester United next season. And in terms of winning the league, as much as I hate to say it, I would see City bouncing back after uh, last season's, quite frankly, pitiful title defence. So again, I hate to say it, but I'm predicting City to win the league. So where do I think Manchester United are going to finish this season? Hmm. Finished third last campaign. 
And that was with us having a good team for half of the season. Look, I don't think Liverpool and City um, or are going to be as great as they have been over the last two years and get as many points. And I definitely think we'll close the gap on at least one, if not both of those teams. It's going to be a difficult season though. I'd go third, but I think it'll be a better campaign than it was last season. On the prediction, I said United were going to finish second, but I did caveat that with saying we bring in Sancho and we bring in a couple of other players. In my head, I was thinking we might reinforce centre-half or left-back and possibly bring in another midfield. So that's the proviso of like we would have had then four signings in the window. Um, as it stands, we're one midfielder into that and I think that directly impacts where we finish. Um I do think Liverpool are not going to be anywhere near as good as they were last time. I think they're several points off what they were. The performance everybody else dictates whether that's places off where they were. I think City win the league. Um, United are second or third. I think we are in the top four, but again, that does dictate on... I think we are going to make more signings, but we're leaving it fucking late again, aren't we? Well, there was definitely some decent predictions there. I liked the sound of some of those. Um, I mean, for me... Like we said before, we listened to those, like you were saying about Bruno Fernandes and everything. I have got a really good feeling, and I don't know why, about Paul Pogba. And I really hope he doesn't disappoint me like he has done in the past. But I just think if he can stay fit, I think this could be his best season yet at United. I think, you know, media-wise, the hype has died down. The pressure is off him with the likes of Fernandes and uh, Van der Beek. Sorry, I'm going to say beak then and get trolled again. Um, you know, I think that, like I say, there's pressure off him. Um, other creative players, players of a better calibre around him, I think will help. Um, and I think having a manager, clearly him and Mourinho did not get on. And I think having another season of a manager who clearly understands him, I think it'd be really interesting to see what happened, you know, behind closed doors with um, Pogba and, and Solskjaer and, you know, if he did play a role in maybe making sure that he didn't end up going to Real Madrid or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it'd be interesting to see. But yeah, I've, I've got a good feeling about Pogba. I mean, what player are you most nervous to watch that you think maybe needs needs to really make a name for themselves this season? I, I don't know about nervous, but I'm just, I don't know what to make of the goalkeeping situation. Like, mm -hmm. Henderson in goal or De Gea in goal, I'm, I'm nervous about that situation, how fans are going to react. If, is it going to be divided? Is it is it going to cause some tension? You know, fans are on one side, fans are on the other side. I, I am just, I'm just nervous to see how it's going to work out. Mm. Yeah, same. I mean, I've, I, I agree. I mean, we spoke about it on a previous podcast about our feelings about De Gea and Henderson. I just hope that Whoever ends up being in goal does a good job. That's all I'm bothered about at the moment. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and um, who who do you reckon is going to be our top scorer? Do you know what? I think Martial. I'm going to go for Martial. Yeah. Just because I think he, he's going to get a lot more service. He, you know, he what was he on? 23 goals last season. Mm -hmm. I think he's just he's just going to excel. You know just like Rashford, but I just think Martial will will just get will get the goals. I think he he's that kind of player. His hold up plays great. Um he's strong. He his movement is really good. Um he's just been amazing. His work rate's been amazing. I think he's just gonna do even better this season. Yeah, I, I agree. I really hope that this is Martial's year. Um you know he's had a lot of stick in the past. Um he's looked uncomfortable at times he's had difficult times so I think yeah if, if this can be his season uh, I'd be absolutely buzzing for us and for him as as a player um so right let's finish this hot topic off with I'll ask you now so Premier League where are we finishing third but we've closed the gap a bit okay I'll go with you on that one FA Cup mm. I really want to be optimistic and just say, like, yeah, we're going to win it. <laughs> why not? Just why um, not? I can see us having a bit of a crash and burn situation with that and losing against some really rubbish team. But I hope oh, I'm don't wrong. Don't say um, that. What about the uh, Carabao Cup? 
I don't know. I, I think probably it might just be another semi-final. It, it, I mean, it, for me, I just got in the back of my mind is who else are we going to sign? Because, yes, we do have a strong team. But after a few months, you know, injuries may creep in. You know, mm. we've seen that with Pog, we've seen that with Rashford. And if we haven't got any squad depth, I am worried that, you know, we're, we're going to spread ourselves thinly again. So, yeah. I I don't know. At the moment, with just one signing, I'm... I'm semi-final maybe yeah i'd like to see us get to the final of that just because i was hating on the fa cup and finally obviously these are all hypothetical because we don't even know who we're going to be playing in these competitions but how do you think we'll do in the champions league i mean i'd be happy i know that you know some people might hate on me for this and say i'm being too negative i'd be happy if we just get out of the group stages we have a solid group stage we end up going out in the last 16 providing it's not a complete like embarrassment of a game and it's against you know a team that we could realistically beat if it's against a team that is bigger and better than us if we go out in a respectable way if you can I'd be happy with last 16 to be honest do you know what I, I echo you with that you know I think with what we have and you know with like I just said maybe spreading ourselves thinly because we haven't got squad depth I would think that's okay I think that's where is most likely to be fair at the moment mm. Well, we will have to wait and see, but it's definitely going to be, I hope it's definitely going to be an exciting season for us. Mm -hmm. Um, Moving on to our second hot topic. We're talking about, you know, we've been talking about transfers, you know, people coming in, but we haven't really spoke about players going out. And that's important. We we Mm -hmm. definitely need to get rid of a few players. Um, you know, we've got the likes of Lingard, Pereira, Matic, uh, Mata, sorry. Um, what do you think about, you know, Oli not getting rid of um, certain players? I mean, like Smalling, that deals off. I mean, for me, I'm surprised that we have not cut some of the dead wood. I mean, we'll talk about a few players. I'm not saying all of these players are 100% dead wood. Some of them are a little bit on the fence that maybe you know they could stay some of them have 100 percent dead wood not gonna lie but they're not all i mean for me there's so many defenders that just are not good enough i mean chris smalling everybody as soon as he went to rome everyone was like oh we should have kept him oh he's amazing italian league and the premier league are completely different competitions yes roma had a good season in syria but they're completely different and i'd have been worried if chris smalling didn't look good to, if I'm being completely honest with you, um, I would have been happy with him making the move to Roma. I think he's clearly very, very happy um, in Italy. Um, he's not really expressed like he desperately wants to come back to United. So as much as I understand that we've not signed a centre-back, and I think if we had, then maybe it would be different. But for me, he's somebody that I'd be happy to get rid of. Eric Bailly is a sad situation. I don't think I'd necessarily say get rid because it's more of an injury situation. And, you know, he, he's he's only 26. He should be coming into his prime. Rojo, 30. He was at, I think, um, Estudiantes de la Plata or whatever it's whatever they're called. You know, he's 30. Um, see you later. Um, you know, you've got Phil Jones. I can't believe Phil Jones is only 28 needs to get gone. I think we've all been saying that as much as I feel it's tight that people are horrible to him. And he's like, oh no, no, choke my testimony. Like I do feel tight on him for that. But I just think it's, it ran its course a few seasons ago. And, you know, um, you're looking at Delot. I know we've only recently bought him. He's 21, but he's more of that right back position. We've got Wan-Bissaka. Brandon Williams can potentially play on that side. We've also got Fosu Mensa, depending what happens with that. So I think defensively, definitely, some players, I'd, I'd, I don't understand why they're still here. I understand that we need squad depth, but we need squad depth with players that are of the right level and some of these aren't. Hmm. No, I agree. Um, for me as well, Lingard's a funny one. I, I do oh. like Lingard. I do really like him. But mm. for his football career and his England career, I think he, he needs to move on because he's not going to get games at Manchester United. No. He just isn't good enough to be that quality that we need so for him to want a football career and in the England team I think he just needs to move on um I agree Pereira as well 
Yeah, definitely, definitely Pereira. The thing is, though, the wages that we've given him, I think, is is hard, which is why it's not appealing to other clubs. So this yeah. is why we can't get rid of Jones because he's on loads of money. So it's just, mm. I think the wage structure is broke, um, and and that is affecting us. Mm. I mean, the only good thing is that we finally said goodbye to Alexis Sanchez. Thank God. No disrespect to the man at all. He seems lovely. He loves his dogs. All that stuff. That's great. But yeah, it's um, yeah. I, I was I was glad to see the back. I think everyone was glad to see the back of him, to be honest. But yeah, I think it is strange. I mean, I don't know, guys. Get involved in the comments. Let us know the dead wood or the not so dead wood that you think we should be getting rid of. Maybe you don't agree and you think that we should keep all of those defenders. I don't know, but. Yeah, I think I agree with Lingard as well. It's just one of those things where I don't particularly have an issue with him. I'm sad that things have gone down this route because nobody expected it to go down this route. I know he's got a close bond with a lot of the players. He's grown up with these guys. But like you say, it's definitely, definitely time for him to move on. And and I think United fans would be happy to see him move on and be at a club that is more his level. Um, that he can get consistent game time for because, you know, we all saw it, you know, when he went to the World Cup and he did, you know, he did play well. And we, we want to see that again, definitely. Yeah, definitely. But, yeah, I mean, we'll move on to our our final hot topic now, which is the game on Saturday, Crystal Palace. I'm so excited. I actually am. <laughs> um, I mean, that might sound sarcastic, but I actually am excited. Not normally excited about a lot of things, but this, I cannot wait to finally see United on our screens. Um, I mean, Palace won against, I think it was Southampton that they played at the yeah, weekend. Yeah. They lost against Bournemouth in the, I think the Carabao Cup, uh, 1-0. Um, I think we we beat them, I think it was only like a few few months, a few weeks probably ago. Yeah, it was like 2-0, um, wasn't it? Yeah. Season. We beat them, I think, 2-1, didn't we? And then around this time last year, I think it was 2-1, they actually beat us. Was it 1-0, one, 2-0? One no, I think they beat us 2-1 and it. then we won 2-0. But I'm they, not sure. That's, yeah, I've, yeah, I've got them mixed up there. So, yeah, I mean, are you excited for this game? I, I am buzzing. Um, like you said, Crystal Palace um, has got a game advantage because they did play against Southampton. They won 1-0. So, you know, they, they're on a high. They're buzzing. They've got some confidence. Crystal Palace for me, it, it's a hard one. Do you know what? They're, they're a well-structured team. They're very defensive. Um, going into that game, I'd probably have the same lineup that we have had at the end of last season. Um, maybe two changes. I would have Fred as a CDM. Not because I don't like Matic. I love Matic. But against Crystal Palace, where they are so defensive, I think Fred would play that role a lot better because he'd move the ball quicker because yeah. they would sit back. Um, and my second change would be Shaw because he's back. He's fit. Um, our left side will look a lot better. So it might improve Rashford as well. Because when Shaw was injured, Rashford kind of seemed off his pace. He seemed to dip in form. Maybe that could be because of Shaw. Their link-up play was amazing. Um, yeah, so I'd, I'd probably keep the same team with just those two changes. I'd obviously have De Gea in goal. Um, but yeah, I, I am excited and I, I can't wait to see what Donny van der Beek will do I think he will be on the bench but I think he will come on in the mm. second half maybe so yeah, yeah I, I am excited um, I mean people are saying that Pogba has potentially I don't know if it's lack of fitness the coronavirus situation etc um, so would you if he's fit are you, is he in your midfield yeah no 100% Pogba is in the midfield with Bruno I think we I think Donny van der Beek will just be on the bench and be that impact player, I think, that comes on, um, you know, for Pogba or Bruno. Mm. I mean, like, he can play the defensive role, but I don't really want to play him when, you know, he's at his best at attacking. So, yeah, I would I would put him on for Pogba or Bruno. And if, if Pogba is, um, you know, looking a bit tired, and he's not with it, then, you, you know, you, we've got that quality. We can pull Pogba off. Yeah. put Donny van der Beek on and, you know, we still got quality for quality. So, yeah, I'm not worried about the midfield at all. Yeah. Um, and who who have you got next to Maguire? Well, it, it has to be um, Lindelof because we literally mm. haven't got a replacement. But 
like like I said before, I definitely want Menge to come in. I want him drip fed into the team. I think he'd be a solid partnership for Maguire. Yeah. I mean, I was thinking, I mean, it probably will be Lindelof. I was disappointed with Lindelof last season. Um, I mean, depending if he's fit, and I guess it depends if you want to take the risk because we do want to start the season strong. Um, I wouldn't have minded seeing maybe Eric Bailly. Um mm. Because I've I've always thought he I've, I've always rooted for him and wanted him to do good. But knowing our luck, he will get on the pitch and after five minutes slip and like injure himself or something will go wrong. Um, so yeah, I can probably see Lindelof in that position on side of Maguire. Like you say, it's just habit really, isn't it? They're used to each other. Mm. And definitely, I'll I'll be annoyed if De Gea is not in goal because I just think what kind of message is that sending out? Um, by not starting him um, and I hope that he starts Greenwood as well I mean I know the trolls have been tweeting and chatting saying that he shouldn't start him or oh is he going to start him if the kid's fit the kid should be playing simple as it in in my opinion I don't know what you think oh no definitely he should be playing 100% yeah. I think you know he just needs to get his head down and work hard now and just prove everyone wrong really yeah. Um also, with United against uh, Pass or anyone actually this season, I think we definitely need to take our chances a lot more because we've seen last season where we didn't take our chances and we ended up losing a yeah. game. We cannot afford to do that this season. Mm -hmm. You know, Crystal Palace are not an attacking side, but if they take their chances and score and we don't take our chances, you know, then we've lost, a, you know, a game again. We've lost another three points. And I don't want to go back to how we was last season. I think we need to improve on that and just take our chances, get the goals um, and just get the job done, really. I mean, what's what's your prediction? Um, I am going 2-0. It is. I think it is going to be a hard game. Um, they, they are going to sit back. But I think we can break them down. We, we're going to get two goals, I think. I'm not mm. sure who will score, so don't ask me that. But it definitely is 2 0 for me. I mean, I'm gonna go. I'm I'm gonna go a bit wild on this one. I think obviously they uh, they beat Southampton only just they just beat them one 0 They were very lucky because Southampton did have their chances. So if they only just scrape past Southampton, I'm gonna go. I think we need a good start to the season. Set the tone. I'm good. Why not? Go? Yeah, I'm going four 0 Why not? Oh. Oh, brave. That's good. <laughs> but yeah, they're both wins anyway, so let's hope at least one of them's right. Yeah. Okay, so next up is our interview where myself and Emma caught up with Sky Sports presenter and Manchester United fan, Joe Tomlinson. Hi, Joe. How are you? Thank you for joining me and Angelina. Yeah, I'm good. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's good to be here. How are you guys? Yeah, I'm not bad. Good. All good here in Berlin. <laughs> good, good. Uh, so, Joe, Manchester United's first game this season at the weekend. Mm. How do you feel uh, about going into the game? Are you excited or are you a little bit worried? We did have that friendly against Aston Villa where we lost 1-0. Do you read into friendly games much? Um, I'm not reading into that result too much, to be totally honest with you. I, I, I mean, we we'll watched the highlights. I didn't watch the full game, unfortunately, but I was having a look at some of the, the teams that were put out, obviously, wholesale changes at half time. I think it's probably six or seven players that will come into that team and make a big difference. So not reading into it too much. From the, from the highlights I saw as well, uh, we should really have taken some chances in that first half, probably three or four really, really good chances got to hit the back of the net. So I'm not reading into that result too much, but I am looking forward to the Crystal Palace game. It feels like there's so much negativity around Manchester United uh, this summer because of the transfer situation. But I think people seem to have forgotten we were on a sort of 20 game unbeaten run at one stage, was back end of last season. And we've got a full season of Bruno Fernandes to look forward to. So, you know, I'm, I'm feeling pretty positive. You know what? I like that. I like people on the positivity train. That is something <laughs> that we do like here. I mean, there's so much debate about uh, Van der Beek, Pogba, Fernandes, where they'll play. We're not Mystic Meg. We're not going to know what Ollie decides to do. But who, in your opinion, do you think is going to be the most vital out of the three? Um, I think it'll be Bruno Fernandes. Uh, just, 
judging by his influence in in the dressing room as well. And I think on the field, he's probably going to be the fulcrum of most of our attacks. So I'll say Bruno Fernandes, but I think it'll be fairly evenly distributed. I would say Paul Pogba, but I'm slightly concerned about whether he's going to have the consistency across a full season. I haven't seen it for a while now, have we? Ever a full uh, sort of 40, 50 game run. So hopefully he can do that this season. And certainly if he is able to do that, then I think he'll be super important. Going into the first weekend, I think Pogba will probably be coming from the bench after the coronavirus scare he had. Uh, I, I kind of expect to see a midfield of Bruno Fernandes and Donny van der Beek um, and then one of the other guys in there alongside him, whether it be Matic or whether it be Scott McTominay, who looked pretty impressive against Aston Villa from what I saw as well. Um, so I think it'll be Bruno, but don't discount Paul Pogba if he can put together a really good run of games. Good, good. Um, in addition to Donny van der Beek, um, we was rumoured to have um, Gareth Bale um, sign at Manchester United. Mm. Obviously, that is not happening now. It looks like he may be going back to Spurs. How do you feel about that? Are you gutted that he isn't coming to Old Trafford or are you happy that we are not signing him? Um, it's a bit of a weird one, isn't it? It's a bit of a weird one because I feel like Manchester United fans, me included, would probably take anyone at this stage in terms of a new signing. Uh, and I don't think Gareth Bale would have been the worst option. I'll probably get hammered for saying that. But to be honest with you, he would have just added one more player in that forward area that I think we're missing. Uh, he wouldn't have bought the long term and longevity that Solskjaer's looking for. But, you know, if it was going to be a 12 month loan deal and we could have got him on a good wage packet, then we could have approached Sancho next summer again. I just think it's super important that we get Jaden Sancho effectively, whether it happens this summer or it happens next summer. We have to find a way of getting this guy to Old Trafford. So if Gareth Bale was going to allow us to do that, then I would have probably taken Gareth Bale. I don't think he's going to rip up any trees by any means. He's not going to be the Gareth Bale we saw in the, the Premier League of Tottenham old. But, you know, he might come in and contribute 10 goals to that Tottenham Hotspur team and they'll probably take that. The one problem with him is obviously those wages. Uh, even 50% of £500,000 is 250k a week. And after having our hands burnt pretty badly by Alexis Sanchez, I don't think the board was ever that interested. Yeah, I, I, we did not need another salary like that. <laughs> yeah. Just short of Sanchez, can you yeah. imagine? I mean, going more towards the defence, there's been so many rumours about centre-back signings for United. Nothing really yeah. concrete, but a lot of whispers. Um, it seems like Oli does have faith in the youngsters that we have. I mean, depending what happens with the futures of, you know, Smalley and Rojo, Jones, Eric Bay and his fitness, if Lindelof can maybe have a better season. Do you think looking at, um, obviously more in a right-back position, I guess, normally, but, you know, someone like Tuan Zabi or even... Um, Tatum, Mengi, or maybe some of the other centre-backs in the under-23s team. Do you think that's something that is a good thing that Solskjaer's maybe looking towards maybe getting younger players in? Or do you think if we end up having to use some of these younger players, they're going to be out of the depth and it's going to be a bit embarrassing? Um, it's an interesting one because obviously Solskjaer, one thing people can't criticise him for at Manchester United is his ability to bed youth into the team. We've seen him do it with the likes of Mason Greenwood. He's certainly improved. Scott McTominay, I'd say Marcus Rashford's got a lot better as well under him. Brandon Williams had a bit of a breakout season last year. I'm sure he'll be looking to improve. Um, but the one area I think as a youngster, it's particularly hard to come in and have an immediate impact is at the centre of defence where it's going to be a very physical game, especially in the Premier League, going to get battered and bruised by a lot of um, old heads up front. I can't imagine 17-year-olds wanting to go into a game against Burnley, for instance, with Chris Wood knocking on the door. Um, so I think that's the most difficult position to bet a youngster in. But obviously, Oli is very, very happy with the likes of Mengi, isn't he? We've heard him talk pre-season and towards the back end of last season in certain Europa League games about how how much quality he's got. Um, with Axel, I think it's going to come down to injuries, to, to be totally honest. He just can't seem to put together a run of games, can he, without getting a significant injury. So I I would be surprised if Manchester United don't dip into the market for a, for a centre-back this summer. I think it is a much-needed position for Manchester United to strengthen. Eric Bailly is too inconsistent. And Victor Lindelof, I just don't think he's physical enough. I feel like he loses out on too many aerial balls and makes some rash decisions. So I do think Harry Maguire needs a long-term partner, despite the fact that our defence, particularly the first six months of last season, were kind of dragging us through. A lot of people say, oh, you know, our attack was so good last season. Well, you know, I think we scored less goals than Leicester City. So it was good, but it could be better. And our defence was pretty solid. So I think there's areas to address all over. Is um, there a certain centre-back that you have in mind that you would like to see? I mean, are you more of a 
going for the youngster of a more of an up Meccano or someone more experienced like a cooler ballet, obviously City might get him, but mm. I don't think Kula Bali would be right for Manchester United, to be totally honest. Um I feel like our version of Kula Bali was pro probably Harry Maguire uh, when we signed him. A uh, slightly more experienced head, coming in on a big fee uh, and a natural leader. I think the partner alongside uh, ha Harry Maguire, it's almost like when we signed Eric Bai, that's the sort of player you're looking for. And it's a shame that Eric Bai hasn't been able to fulfill that potential of when we first signed him because he he's just been so consistently injured, to be honest. So yeah, I would be targeting him for Meccano. Uh, a little bit surprised he didn't have a go at him when his release clause was still active earlier in the summer before he signed that new deal. Obviously, has another release clause next summer at 42 million euros. So <clears throat> I think we'll probably hold until that ha until that release clause is active if we can't get anyone in this summer because the centre back market is pretty mediocre right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, out, out of all those players that you said about the youth um, team, I would pick Mengi to go alongside Maguire. I think he's got the quality he's got the strength he's got the hunger I think we need to drip feed him into the team and rotate him with Lindelof but talking of defenders um I seen you share a tweet about Regulon and obviously mm. it, he's looking likely to go to Spurs um but do you think Ollie is looking at a left back because he needs reinforcements with Shaw and Williams um I do think it's a difficult one because our left-back situation isn't diabolical, to be totally honest with you. I think Luke Shaw, if he could put together a decent run of games, I still think he's a good left-back. Uh, Brandon Williams, I like Brandon Williams, but I think his future probably lies at right-back, to be honest with you. I'm not too sure in the modern game you can have a right-footed left-back um, that can that is going to want to constantly drift inside because it takes up a lot of room for Marcus Rashford who wants to do the same thing. So I think his future probably lies at right back, which is why Oli was probably having a look at Reguillon. Very good value in the market, sort of £20 million for a 23-year-old who's got heaps of experience on the European stage and comes from good pedigree at Real Madrid. So I'm not surprised he was having a look at Reguillon and it would have offered some more competition for Luke Shaw and allowed Brandon to potentially then become the, the sort of competition for Aaron Wan-Bissaka, uh, where Diogo Dalot clearly isn't really, and Timothy Fossi-Mensa uh, isn't either. So um, I think Reguillon would have been a good option, but I can, again, see the club's stance of we, why would we give a buyback clause in this situation? It'd effectively be a, a, a very good loan move with a big old fee for, for Real Madrid. So... I understand it. I'm a little bit disappointed to see it happen because I also thought that it would have allowed Luke Shaw to uh, play as that left centre-back when we drop into a back three, which he was super effective at, at times. Um, so I'm a little bit disappointed, but I'm not heartbroken because at the end of the day, Luke Shaw, Brandon Williams, it's an OK left-back situation to have. Yeah, that, I agree. I always felt like it wasn't like the area that we were lacking the most, like we could have got three, yeah. maybe, well, it looks like we will be getting through another season with two of them. Um, now, un unfortunately, we've already seen Arsenal win, Liverpool win. That mm -hmm. Liverpool-Leeds game, I was trying to think of how they could both lose, but apparently that's not possible. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, Liverpool got a win, Chelsea got a win. Um mm -hmm. Who do you think United need to be worried about most this year? I mean, probably all of them, but I mean, Liverpool, because, you know, they were champions and they were all right last season, I guess. Um, Arsenal, who are being pegged as like the dark horse of the competition. Chelsea, with all their signings, or just those noisy, annoying neighbours? Um, I don't think you need to worry about Liverpool and Manchester City, to be totally honest with you. Uh, still a cut ahead of the rest yeah. of the pack, in my opinion, especially Manchester United at this current uh, juncture, which I, f I feel a bit sad saying, but let's be honest, let's get real. That's that's the truth. Manchester City and Liverpool are streets ahead of us right now in terms of squad depth and quality. Um, so I would be I would be worried about Chelsea's summer. They've obviously spent a significant amount of money and uh, Marina Gravaskaya has absolutely smashed it negotiating why She's got some incredible deals over the line, paid little to no money for the likes of Timo Werner and Hakim Ziyech. So I would like to have seen that business done at Old Trafford, but it wasn't to be. So a little bit worried about Chelsea. I think at the moment they'd be finishing ahead of Manchester United. Um, Arsenal, maybe. Uh, the Aubameyang contract is definitely going to give him a huge lift. And I think Arteta has already got pretty good feeling around the club. Uh, a lot of Arsenal fans are very confident, maybe rightly, maybe wrongly. I'm not too sure so far, but I've not been that impressed by their summer 
that Gabriel yeah. might end up being a good pickup, and I'm sure William Saliba, sort of six months down the line, might look really solid at centre back. Um, so maybe Arsenal, Tottenham could, if if Jose gets Bale and Harry Kane and Son into the same front three and all of them firing at the same time. Sometimes second season Jose can just produce some pretty dirty results, even though he's playing boring football. So hopefully not them. Overall, though, you'd have to say Chelsea. I think Chelsea were the team that pushed us hardest last season. Uh, Leicester look like they've fallen off a little bit. So I'm just concerned that we're not spending as much money as them when they already had a fairly strong squad in the first place. Mm. Mm. Um, all, all those teams have got some great players, some great signings. But we do have some great players as well, one being Anthony Martial. Now, Joe, I've seen you tweet something about you want Martial to win the Golden Boot. Um, how do you think his performance was last season and why do you think he will be the best he has ever been this season? Um, yeah, I, I'll be honest with you. I put him in my list for the Golden Boot uh, as a bit of a wind-up to a certain group of fans. But <laughs> having said that, I do think he, he stands a shot. Um, it's going to take some going, given the, the, the signs Mo Salah showed against Leeds, who looks red hot, and Aubameyang, obviously, as well. Uh, but I felt like in the last six months of Martial, we saw a little bit of a maturing in, in him as a number nine. I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has brought out the very best of Anthony Martial. I think Didier Deschamps said something similar when he went away to train and play with the French national team, that he'd seen a little bit of a change in Anthony Martial. In and around the box, he looks a little bit more predatory. I think he looks a little bit more physical. Uh, and his work rate has certainly improved off the ball. He, he was at times lazy under the likes of Jose Mourinho. Uh, and I know Jose criticised him for it. And obviously, sort of Martial FC on Twitter will say, no, nah, he wasn't that lazy. But off the ball, his running was pretty lazy. Uh, and that's certainly something that's improved. He works harder for the team. He's better in and around the box. So if he can continue his form that he showed, especially post-restart, then there's no reason he can't score 20 goals in the Premier League, which is sort of the barometer for a golden boot situation. So that's the reason I, I think Martial have a, have, have a really strong season. Just fingers crossed he doesn't pick up any injuries. And if he does get James Sancho alongside him, I think you can expect a lot better service than we've currently got from that right-wing situation. I mean, how how positive are you? You have mentioned Sancho once or twice. Um, mm. I'm not positive. In my opinion, that ship has sailed. You seem a lot more positive. So I want to know, what, what do you think about this? What is going on? Um, I, I would say I'm 50-50 on it at the moment. I, I genuinely believe Manchester United still are going balls to the wall for Jadon Sancho right now behind the scenes. I think if, if United were kind of not not interested in Jaden Sancho. You wouldn't be seeing these rumours linking them to the likes of Gareth Bale and some of the other names that are more mature stars. You'd be seeing them being linked to other players of the ilk of Jaden Sancho. I'm not really seeing that at the moment. So it kind of feels like Manchester United are almost leaking these rumours into the press to say, you know, all oh, force Borussia Dortmund's hand a little bit um, and drive that price down. At the end of the day, We've seen it with Bruno Fernandes, where we tried to play hardball and end up paying up in the last week. We've seen it with Harry Maguire, where we tried to play hardball, end up playing it in the last week. I just think it will probably be the same situation that we'll try to play hardball, falls apart, and we end up paying 120 million euros anyway when we could have got him in for the first game of the season. That's, that seems to be Man United's negotiating strategy. Um, so I wouldn't be overly surprised to see Jaden Sancho wearing a Man United shirt uh, come October the 5th. Here's hoping. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Um, I think that concludes our interview now as well. Yeah. Cool, lovely. Nice uh, one, guys. No, thank you for joining us, Joe. No worries. Thanks very much for having me, guys. Great interview from Joe there. I, you know what? I love someone positive with a bit of optimism and let's hope that what he's mentioned about Sancho, he'll be playing for us by October. I'm going to be ringing him up if that's wrong. I've, I'm taking that as gospel now. <laughs> right, OK, let's crack on to our Q&A. So first question is for you, Emma. This is from Usman Ali. Would you rather get a left-back or a centre-back? I mean, left-back has never been a priority for me. We, You know, we've got Brandon Williams. We do have Shaw. Um, Shaw fit. He's a, he's a great player. He's a great left-back. He's going forward is great. His link-up play with Rashford is amazing. I, my priority is a centre-back. I think... We seen it last season. It's very vulnerable. Maguire and Lindelof partnership is just not strong. It's just not strong enough. And we need um, 
a centre back with a bit of pace that could accommodate Maguire because you know Lindelof. I like the guy. He just he just doesn't work well with Maguire. Um, so yeah, definitely a centre back we need. Yeah. Who I I, I don't know. Uh, um, going on to your question, Angelina. It's from oh I, I actually can't say that name. Chuck Wu Boozy. Um, why is Manchester United not ready to win a trophy? Um. Have I missed something that someone said that they're not ready to win a trophy? I, I don't know. Um, I think United are ready to win a trophy. I think we've been ready to win a trophy since we won the last one, however many years ago. Um, yeah, I've, 100%, I think we're ready to win a trophy. I think we've got um, you know, a squad that maybe does need work in certain areas, but I think we've got a strong squad of a great age with a great manager that has a lot of belief in the team and what they can do. Um, you know, we've had some fantastic results last season and I'm sure we'll be getting some great ones this season. And we have had opportunities. Like I've mentioned before, we got to semi-finals. It's just having that last little push to get to the finals. So, yeah, I, I think United is well and truly ready to win a trophy and we better be winning one in the next year. Just saying. Mm. Um, okay, so next question is from Blue Plays Games. If we somehow pull off Sancho and Reguilon, do you think we could finish second at least? Oh, second. And where will we finish if we don't make any further signings? I mean, the Reguilon, I don't think that's happening anymore. So we can take that out. Um, Sancho... I am still positive. I do think that is going to happen. So if we do get him and then we've got Donny van der Beek, I don't think we'll, we'll be second. I really don't. You know, Liverpool um, and City are miles ahead in front of us. I do think we'll get third and we're just going to close that gap. I think we we need a few more signings to contend um, against City and Liverpool. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I agree 100%. Mm. Um, next question is from Yaki Kanta. I can't pronounce his name. I apologise. What are Fosu Mensa's chances of breaking into the squad, maybe as a DM? I know he was highly rated. What's gone wrong? Do you guys think there's a way back for him? Oh, right. Tim now, when, I I was, um, when I was talking to Joe before, I said to Anzabi as a right back, I actually went Fosu Mensa. Before people get on me in the comments saying, don't know what I'm talking about, people are allowed to make mistakes, so shut up. Um, you know what, this Fosu Mensa situation, it's, a, it's another sad one. We have seen him in a centre-back position. He does play more of a right-back position. And I guess that's when you look at, you know, you've got Juan Bissaka that I wouldn't change for the world. You've got Brandon Williams, who, as Joe mentioned on the interview, might end up playing more of that kind of role on the right and being you know, like in competition with Wambasaka. You've then got Delot, which I don't really know what's going on there, to be honest. Um, and then you've got Fosu Mensa. So I think what's gone wrong, I think it's probably, I, I've, I don't think he's maybe had the best loans. I think he has maybe been mismanaged at times. And I, I think, to be honest, it's just the injuries, you know, the, yeah. the ACL, the knee injury, it's all this all this stuff that's been going on for him, um, I mean, it, it's really affected him and it's really messed things up for him. And, and it is, it's very sad to see. I mean, I think he made about eight appearances in total last season, obviously a few for United. Um, and I think he was a left back. I'm sure it was when we played Palace. I might be wrong, but yeah, I just think I, I could see, you know what, if there's a way of making it work and him going into more of a defensive midfield role, I think that would be an area that we, in a few, in a season or two, we might need somebody because we've got, you know, Matic is not going to be around forever. We've got McTominay, mm. one or two other youngsters. He is still young. Um, so, yeah, I, I would love to see a way back for him. Um, if that's the way back for him, then brilliant. I think one thing I will say is I think Solskjaer is definitely the right manager to deal with a player like that where things haven't gone to plan. He is the type of manager I think that will put an arm around him and help him um, and maybe try and see what they can do. I, I don't know, but definitely wish him uh, wish him all the best, 100%. Yeah. Um, I think that concludes our Q&A. 
Um, thank you very much, everybody, for the question. Don't forget to check out the Stretford Paddock community tab where we drop um, the opportunity for you guys to ask us these questions and we pick some. Um, going into the final segment of our podcast, we have got in defence. Emma, who are we talking about this week? Uh, we are talking about... Um, f- oh, no, actually, who are we talking about? Talking about Luke Shaw. I oh, think. we are. <laughs> it was my suggestion as well, wasn't it? <laughs> Luke Shaw is my suggestion. Of course it is. Um, yeah, Luke, Luke Shaw. Uh, you know, with all the rumours of these left backs, you know, regular was meant to be coming... I've seen fans tweet some horrible stuff about Shaw, you know, about his weight, say he's injury prone, you know, that he's rubbish footballer. Um, I just don't like it. You know, yes, Ollie might have been focusing on a left back, but it doesn't mean that you rip into Luke Shaw and talk about his weight and, and his footballing skills. It, it's just not okay. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I've always felt bad for Luke Shaw. I think I forget that he's like 25, isn't he? Um, Still of a very young age and he's he's been through a lot. Um, You know, as a youngster, being having the the spotlight shone on him so brightly, the pressure that he was under, that horrific injury that he had, you know, struggling to come back from that. And then I think it was a sink or swim situation, maybe last season or the season before, and he really seems to be finding his feet a little bit more. Mm. And I think you also have to question, you know, people that do start hating on these people, you know, it's it spoke about a lot more now, but, you know, especially not just everyone's mental health, but the mental health of men as well, how psychologically he must have been affected by being, you know, this young player that was destined for greatness. You've had a horrific injury. Let's be honest, he ain't as fast as he was. He has lost his pace um, a little bit, I would say. Um, he's, you know, had to struggle and fight and come back from that. That's got to do something to you. You've got to be a seriously strong person to have to deal with that. Um, obviously, you mentioned the weight stuff, which is, is just tight. I mean, I know everybody can have a laugh and a joke and stuff like that. Yeah, maybe sometimes he did look a little bit bigger than, than we've seen him before, but... I think we spoke about this on one of the other podcasts as well. Like, I think it came up about Lukaku when he went to Inter Milan, that it ended up that they ran some nutritional tests and he actually had intolerances to certain food and that's why he was maybe bulkier or whatever you want to call it. It could be a similar situation for sure. You don't actually know. I mean, do I honestly think that he sat, you know, ordering Domino's every single night and, like, eating tubs of Ben and Jerry's? Of course he's not. <laughs> like, well, I don't know, maybe it's, but no. Like, you know, maybe there was something going on there. And then to have that on you as well, I I, I agree. I think it's just, mm. it, it's too much. And as much as maybe he's not lived up to everyone's expectations, I think he's, all things considered, I think he's done really well. I think he's done well to come back, to fight back. Um, you know, Brandon Williams was kind of taking that left-back position a little bit as in he came onto the scene and everyone was like, oh my God, he's the future, like forget about Shaw, blah, blah, blah. And he's still kind of had a presence and been like, nah, I'm here. I'm still all right, guys. Um, which is why, you know, if we don't get a left back, I am really excited to see what he brings. And and I hope that the pressure is kept on him maybe by Williams and it gives him another little kick up the backside and he carries on being good. Um, I think, you know, fans do forget that when he got injured and Williams was playing, we was actually missing him. A lot of fans were saying, well, wow, we're, we're missing Shaw here. We we need Shaw yeah. here. And now for them to do a massive turnaround and be like, no, he's rubbish. We don't want him because someone else is, you know, being rumoured to come. That's fine. Another left back can come. It just gives more, more of a rotation. It doesn't mean that we replace Shaw because yeah. Shaw is still a good player. Um, you know, he's made, he's made a, a massive impact for us in the defence, I think, you know, Brandon Williams, he has been amazing, but we, we have seen it when Shaw got injured. We, we missed him. We missed that link-up play with Rashford. Yeah. Down that left wing, uh, that left side, was very, very vulnerable. Mm. Um, and, you know, fans were saying the exact same thing. So for them to turn around now and say, oh, he's rubbish, we, we don't want him, we, we want him replaced, is harsh and it's horrible. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, let's let's hope that Luke Shaw has you know, a brilliant season, he shuts up all of these haters and he, you know, doesn't really, he, he just has a, a nice smooth sailing season where, you know, we've produced some really great moments for us, 
and he makes people maybe eat a bit of humble pie. Um, but yes, well, that was a good in defence. I liked that one. I always like, you know, backing Shaw because I do feel tight some of the things that are said. Um, but yes, that is the end of our podcast this week. Thank you so much to Joe Tomlinson for joining us. Um, Emma, where can everyone find you? Um, you can find me on my YouTube ch- channel, That United Family. You can also find me on Twitter, Emma Edgar underscore. Yeah, and as always, you can you can find me over at One Football. And my name's Angelina Kelly, as I always say. What well, find me, search me. I'm sure, I'll come up. Might not accept you. I might do. That's what made me. But yes, thank you to everybody for listening, for watching for getting involved make sure that you continue to get involved in the comment section hit the subscribe button don't forget to give it a thumbs up check out everything else that is going on at stretford paddock and myself and emma we will see you guys next week